Come on. In Australia, how lucky are we? We get to live most of our lives outside. That's why it's so important that we maximise every inch of our outdoor space. If your outdoor area is anything like this courtyard, small, dark, damp and cold, it makes you just want to cry out for some colour. Should we get to work? Gee, thanks. <laughs> Best thing about colour is you can turn this from drab to fab. What do you call this then, Jase? Yeah, that's a win. Challenge. <laughs> I'll make something out of that. Should we talk design? Sure. OK. Nice picture. What do you think? Feature wall over there, something dark. Nice. And this fence, it needs painting. What do you think about something really bright, even white, to match the wall next door? We're going to put some posts in and then we can train some lights off the top of them. Cute. And maybe I can just add pops of colour by, you know, rejigging some of the old furniture and just making it feel fun and fresh. The first job to tackle is our feature wall. I thought Tara was the painting expert. To tell you the truth, this is just the undercoat. One thing that Fibro Smed does is it sucks up a lot of moisture. So it's super important that you prime it with a primer. On top of the fibrous cement wall, for a bit of texture and detail, I'm going to add strips of timber. When it comes to painting things like this or in situ, you've got to weigh up the pros and cons. Yes, I had to set up the trestle tables, but I can get to all the edges because you're only going to see three faces, the front and the two sides, and it means I'm not painting in situ where I'd be cutting in every individual slat. Painting the fence, well, let's face it, it's not usually high on the fun jobs list. So you don't want to be doing it too often and you do want to save yourself some time. Now, it's important to note that if you use Weather Shield, of course, it's a great quality paint. But anything off a white base actually is self-priming, so it actually cuts down on a step. So you kind of get two goes in one. It saves you time and it gives you a great result. Still painting. I'm still painting. No, I'm still painting. <laughs> and you love it less than I do. Love paint. He doesn't love painting. <laughs> the final coat's colour of our feature wall is Dominate, this dark grey. And I've got something very cool to add to this that's really going to pop against it. In my opinion, French doors are such an asset in any home. By taking out the old courtyard door, the solid panel, and replacing it with two long glass panels, it's going to blur the lines between the inside and the outside and it'll give our room a beautiful view. These ones are raw timber, so first up I'm priming them. Once that's dry, I'll be able to give them their top coat. Garden furniture is ideal to add pops of bold colour where you need it. I love this old bench, it's in great condition, but to stop the timber rotting any further and just protect it for future years, I'm going to paint it. Starting off with an undercoat and then its beautiful top coat colour, which I'll tell you in a moment. Bit of a surprise. How much better does that look already? Now, the fibro cement's cheap and easy to work with, but when you dress it up like this, it looks like you've had a designer in it. The domino is a great colour. As spacings, I'm just using an offcut, and that texture, when the sun hits it, will look amazing. You see bird cages like this chucked out all the time, and done up, these would make really quirky plant hangers. This one, well, it's made of metal, so you do need to use a metal primer. Once that's dry, you can use whatever top coat colour you like. Now, Tara's painted fence looks perfect, but to give it a bit of texture and a bit of interest, I've added some hardwood posts and some Rio mesh. Now, this is normally what you put into a concrete slab to give it strength, but that rusty look, which is very trendy, goes really nicely with these old bricks, sort of dresses them up and brings them into the modern era. As far as materials go, it doesn't get much cheaper than this stuff. Told you to be dramatic. How good do these stag horns look? Now, they're Australian native. They grow on the trunks of trees in really dark, damp, rainforest type conditions, but they'll do perfectly well here on a feature board of marine ply. Now, this is a shady spot, so they're going to do fine. 
As far as maintenance goes, well, if you can get an old banana peel and throw it up and land it in there, that'll compost and it's nice food for them. And you need to water them from above so it falls down and runs the back. Now, I had to create this little step here to hide all those ugly pipes. They're going to ruin the look. And then to hide that little step, I'm going to put a shelf in here. So three little store-bought brackets, and this will be a beautiful little potting shelf. Yellow is not always the easiest colour to get right, especially for outdoor areas. So in my opinion, go for something that's slightly toned like this, and it'll just settle right in and just work well with brickworks and foliage and anything else you've got going on outside. Now, this is going to be my main accent colour, so on to the bench. And I think I might do the French doors as well. Because this bench is going to cop all the weather, basically rain, hail and shine, by going over it with a good quality paint like this, it just means it's going to look this good for years to come. Painting doors and windows, well, it does take a little bit of skill, but there are a few tips to make the job easier. First up, make sure that you choose a paintbrush that you can hold comfortably in your hand. And instead of holding it on the handle, I hold it by the stock. It just gives you more control. Now, when you look at the makeup of the door itself, you can see here it's actually made up in sections. So we've got a piece across and two pieces on either side. Always paint with the grain. That way you'll get a more professional finish. I like that, much better. Can't hear. <laughs> it's much better. Oh, sorry, I won't shout. <laughs> you probably know by now that Jason and I, we love a little upcycling. Pretty lucky, we scored these pieces here from a metal fabricator and we've just had the guy weld a hook shape to the top. So the idea is we want to add a little height to the top of this wall, something kind of along these lines. That way we can either hang baskets or lights. Moment of truth. Lights, camera, action. To soften the rear, which I like the look of, I'm going to plant hardened birdia. Probably 10 years ago, I would have planted star jasmine, but have you ever noticed star jasmine in a shady spot? It grows right to the top, and then it's all leggy and ugly underneath. Well, hardened birdia, it's an Australian native. It's more of a rainforest plant, so it can handle those shady spots, but it loves the sun as well. And what I'm doing at the moment is just cutting out the hanging basket. So if I pulled it out, I'd rip all these tentacles. Now, it's a bit of a flopper, which is good, because if it does get top heavy, you can flop down and cover the bare spots. But when this flower is in late winter, and this one's white, there's a good chance you'll have more white than what you will the green foliage, and it looks absolutely spectacular. As far as a flowering native goes, it's probably my favourite. <laughs> Painted pots are such a great way to introduce just little splashes of colour in the garden. If you are working on terracotta, things to know, it's cheap, it's affordable, but you do need to seal terracotta. You actually need to create a membrane both inside and out to stop the water from soaking through under the paint. OK, now you'll find you'll have better paint coverage if you actually use a primer first. It comes white, but you can have the paint counter actually tint it for you and turns it this soft grey. Now, hit it with this, and when it's dry, it just makes your top coat colours more vibrant. And for these, well, I'm just going for this kind of bubblegum pink. I think it'll look really pretty in the garden. So good. Don't these look amazing? Just this really lovely sunny yellow just adds a little touch of warmth to this dark corner of the courtyard. Multitasking. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Jace, I've loved working on this courtyard with you. Thank you. Thanks, Daz. How good are we as a team? I love the staghorns, the dark colour. It just draws you in. That was really an eyesore, and now it's the main feature. But I like all of this, because this is the stuff that means you want to come and spend a whole night out here and sit around with your mates and really relax, because it's as cute as any fancy cafe or restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it's all simple and achievable. This is fresh. It's colourful. We've certainly 
done what we set out to achieve, and that was to brighten up this space. It feels happy, feels alive, and it's brought a little of the indoors out. I think this is perfect for the way we live in Australia right now.